guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 146, featuring a review of a brand new CRPG called Legend of Grimrock. This game was designed by a company from Finland named Almost Human, and it's an homage to the good old days of Dungeon Master and Eye of the Beholder. It's a great game, and I had a lot of fun playing it, so without further ado, here is Legend of Grimrock. And here we go with the Legend of Grimrock. Oh man, I love this game. I mean, <laughs> if this game were a woman, I'd be giving it a coupon for a free foot massage you know, anytime. Uh, this is just awesome, mind-blowing stuff. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, harkens back to Dungeon Master, Eye of the Beholder, that genre, but they basically updated the graphics and they tweaked the interface a little bit. Uh, but all in all, this is a really good game. I think it would uh, be fine even if you hadn't played Dungeon Master. Okay, as you can see, I'm whipping up a party here. There's a lot of options and skills and traits and things that you probably uh, have no idea what to do if you haven't played this kind of game before. Uh, therefore, you can just roll the pre-made party, but come on, who's going to do that? <laughs> Half the fun is uh, making a party. Uh, you get four uh, heroes. Now, unlike Dungeon Master, if you remember that game, you didn't create your party. You just selected them from portraits. I actually uh, prefer this. I'll give you a quick uh, breakdown of all these uh, options here in a second. Now, I'll just say, starting out here, I'm not a master of this game. I have I don't know a lot about the uh, way these skills and uh, uh, stats work on a micro sort of level. I, I was able to get through the game um, on normal difficulty, and that's fine. I don't like the idea of trying to sit here and roll out the quote-unquote perfect party. You know, it's a little bit more interesting as a player if you randomize it a bit and go for some of the more unusual uh, configurations. Uh, sometimes it's fun even to purposefully create a bad party, <laughs> see if you can get through the game with that. Now there's some debate about what's the best uh, party configuration. Uh, some of the people I've been chatting with about this game prefer to have two mages and uh, no rogue. Uh, the other people seem to like to have a swap out one of the mages for a rogue. Uh, the rogues don't have pick locks, disarm traps, you know, the usual sort of rogue, roguish <laughs> skills. So they're really just a damage, damaging class, a DPS class, if you will. That, however, they do a significant damage. Uh, I had mine armed with a bow. I think he probably landed more blows than uh, anybody in my party. Uh, so your, your mileage may vary. I suggest you just uh, uh, play with whatever you, you want. Now, when you're selecting these skills, it's important to note that you don't want to spread yourself too thin. This, this game definitely does not reward uh, characters with lots of different skills. It's better to have fewer skills and more points in them. Uh, you'll basically the, you'll pump a certain number of points into these uh, skills, and then that will give you added abilities. It's not quite as com complicated as the skill tree uh, like Diablo 2 has, uh, for example, uh, but it's sim sort of a similar concept. So, for example, uh, with armor, if you put enough points into armor, you'll be able to wear light armor with no penalties. Uh, more points, eventually you can wear the heavy armor with no penalties. Uh, so you really want to focus on, I think, armor uh, for your fighters and then one weapon. I, I found uh, plenty of all different types of weapons, uh, swords, axes, and maces, basically. It doesn't really matter which one you pick, but just make sure you focus in on it. I'm going to give this... Uh, Rogue, a lot of points in range uh, or missile weapons. You don't find, uh, at least I didn't find a bow for a long time, but when you finally do find it, it's uh, really useful uh, to have. Uh, I should say that if you've got a characters in the back row, they can't reach the monsters with a regular weapon. You can arm them with a spear, then they can reach. Of course, they can throw rocks <laughs> or if they're a uh, magic user, of course, spells. So you have uh, the skills, then you have traits. Uh, the traits usually affect one of the uh, various uh, stats or skills, or you can select skilled as a trait, and then you get some more points to put in skills. That seems like a pretty uh, worthwhile endeavor. Uh, the races, as you can imagine, have uh, certain advantages, <laughs> advantages, certain advantages uh, for different classes. You'll notice there's no priest or cleric class here. I guess they didn't want to uh, make the game too complicated. Uh, the only way to heal your characters is to rest, to find a crystal, or to uh, mix up a potion. 
I don't really know why they don't have a priest. I guess there's a lot of atheists in Finland, apparently. I should note, too, just a bit of uh, useful advice. There's a lot of uh, those that resist fire, resist poison. Uh, I wouldn't, in a lot of games, you can just ignore that stuff. But this game, there's so many things that poison you and try to burn you. <laughs> and uh, once you get to the uh, Cthulhu monsters, you're going to be get hit, hit with all this stuff. So it might be worth uh, putting at least a couple of uh, traits into that, especially the poison. That's really annoying. Uh, much better if you can avoid that. Now, later on in the game, of course, you'll be able to raise up these skills. But it's very rare it gives you the opportunity to adjust your stats. You'll find some books every now and then that will let you adjust the stat. Uh, and apparently you only get this uh, these two traits. So take some time, look through the options, because these are pretty important decisions you're making here right at the beginning. Now here's where we start to see the low-budget aspects of this game. Instead of a lengthy cutscene with lots of uh, voice acting and irrelevant story material, character bonding, or whatever that's supposed to do for you, it doesn't do anything for me, uh, we get some lovely paintings to look at, uh, some flavor text, and then we're in the game. Now, I don't know if having a narrator would have made this experience better. I guess you can sort of channel the that sort of British narrator, right? The, Four prisoners bound by heavy chains emerge from the ship. The court accuses them of terrible treason. Uh, magic click before I could see what kind of terrible treasonous deeds these bastards have done. I mean, these guys could be child rapists or software pirates, for God's sake. So the good news is, you're completely pardoned by the king for all of your crimes. Bad news is we're going to flush you stinky rotten turds down the open maw of Mount Grimrock. <laughs> See, told you not to copy that floppy. Legend of Grimrock. See, these guys should have hired me, right? I mean, I, I could have done that. Grimrock. Now, I am, of course, playing this on a PC. But if you have a console, there's, they are actually working on a Nintendo port of this. It's going to be called Happy Fun Androgynous Rock. should be available very soon. As you can see, my four guys here are completely empty-handed. About all they can do at this point is slap the bad guys. You'll also notice that this is a fairly dark and dank chamber. Oh yes, I'm going to need to manage torches. Light management, torch management, whatever you want to call it. Also have to worry about food. Now, fortunately, there's plenty of food in the, in the dungeons. You can pick up mushrooms that are conveniently lying almost everywhere. You can also get all bare grills and eat a chunk of flesh off a corpse. You know, just close your eyes and imagine you're in France. All right, I've solved the first puzzle. <laughs> we picked up the torch and the gate opened. I feel like a genius. Yeah, it's going to get a little bit harder than that, folks. You can pick up these torches as you go along. Actually, you'll get a, a spell that you can uh, cast to make a little light. It's not as good as the torches, but it's uh, you don't have to have that hand holding the torch all the time, which is kind of nice. Looks like I've got a, some clothes here. I'll give this guy the shirt. Give this guy the, the pants. I don't know, I think if I were here, I'd probably rather have pants on than a shirt, given the choice, but uh, I guess that Minotaur is not too modest. Oh, got me a nice, meaty-looking club there. Very nice of somebody to leave that there. Pull the toilet flusher there to open the gate. Now, one thing you want to get in the habit of doing is rotating around. Look at every wall, because there's a lot of secret buttons that you can push to open up secret uh, entrances everywhere. And uh, you just want to get in the habit of doing that fairly early on, because you never really know where they're going to be. I also think the designers have done a good job of gradually introducing these various puzzle types with the pressure plates. There's a lot of different kinds of puzzles in this game. There's teleporter, uh, there's timing uh, puzzles, there's some even some riddles in here. Good, good mix of puzzles, a lot of fun uh, for the most part. Grabbing those uh, torches there. 
Never hurts to have a few extra. You can also whack uh, enemies with them here at the beginning. All right, so I know I'm looking for a key, but where is the key? Now I've got this in old school hardcore mode, which uh, doesn't give you a map. The idea is if you really want to go old school, you're going to crank out, whip out the uh, graph paper and colored pencils and nerd it up. If that's what gives you gaming wood, then go for it. I got to admit, though, I prefer to have the auto map. Makes it a lot easier, and I'm pretty pretty lazy. <laughs> I want to play, not work. Okay, so I found a little button there, and I get me a another key. So it'd be kind of sad, you know, if you got stuck there at that puzzle. Had <laughs> to cheat. <laughs> if you can't figure that puzzle out, I don't even bother with this game. Oh, I've got my first critter. It's a snail. See, I told you we were in France. Can you imagine how excited a French chef would get over this snail? <laughs> Fortunately, this snail is kicking my ass. Come on, guys. What the hell? Hit this thing. Club it. Club a snail. Man. Are snails carn carnivorous? <laughs> oh, this isn't going good. Come on, guys. It's a snail, for God's sake. Hit it. Oh, man. So a guy with a hammer, every problem looks like a snail! Ah! Oh, got it. Okay. Got me a delicious chunk of escargot. Looking forward to that very much. Oh, got me some booties. Slip those on. Because they've been barefoot up to this point, you know. Oh, he's got some pants. He feels a lot better now. He even got a knife. Quite a, quite a stash. It's another torch. So it looks like I'm pretty good now. I'm going to rest up because that Minotaur almost got killed by a snail. Ah, yeah, Kaz, that Minotaur is not. One snail down, 10,117 to go. Oh, I got me a throwing knife. Now that's really nice for my rogue in the back row there because he can chuck that knife, chuck it. 13 points of damage on the knife and four for the rock. That's what I'm talking about. Now these snails don't do too much damage, but you might as well familiarize yourself with a little thing called the Grimrock Shuffle Step. The way that it works is you find yourself in a little room like this with at least four tiles, and you turn and you shuffle, you sidestep, and occasionally poke the baddie with your weapons. It's Kind of a mating ritual, really. Now, it can take a little while, but uh, you'll actually do extra damage if you can hit it from the rear. To do that, though, you need to have a lot of assassination points on your rogue, or you just need a really long shaft to reach around and poke the baddies in the butts. What the hell am I saying? So, this is probably not as as much fun to watch it is, as it is to play uh, these segments, because you really do have to watch and time it very carefully, and it can be very intense uh, later on when some of these monsters will basically be one-shotting you. So, it may not look that impressive, but believe me, it is. it does get intense, and it's quite fun, actually. I like the, uh, the combat very much. Okay, got me some more rocks, got me some flip-flops. Hell yeah, now all I need is a little acoustic guitar and I am ready to roll. Oh, loincloth! See, look at that, that actually takes willpower away. That seems kind of unfair, you know, when I wear my loincloth, I... I guess I do lose some willpower, but I definitely gain in vitality. You know, you can't underestimate the importance of vitality. Okay, nothing else in there, so let's move on. So I guess the big question with this game is... Obviously, it has this discrete movement. You click uh, forward, you move forward one space or one tile, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I call it discrete movement. And there's some discussion of uh, whether that's necessary or enhances the game in any way. Actually, uh, I like it a lot because it really simplifies the movement. And it's really quick. You know, you can scoot around these dungeons a lot faster than you could if you were uh, running or you know, had the smooth movement. So, I'm fine with that, and it also adds a lot of uh, strategic uh, gameplay value with that shuffle step and everything, so I'd be quite happy with uh, playing more games with this 
kind of interface. So we got a... I don't know if you saw that head back there with two missing eyeballs and the clue, heal my sight. I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume I'm not looking for medical marijuana to treat his glaucoma. Oh, here we go. Now we've got a walking mushroom. Man, these are some weird <laughs> monsters. Uh, this guy will actually fart on you. And you have to get out of his uh, area. You just take constant, uh, periodic damage. Pretty uh, rough character. Especially if you encounter more than one at a time. Uh, that's the, the, the difficulty of the game, right? Most of the time, uh, if you're just fighting one enemy, it's not too big of a problem. You can do the, the shuffle step, but occasionally you'll have to fight a big group of monsters all at once, and that's when it gets really hard. Fortunately, I was able to take out Mr. Gaseous Mushroom Head fairly easily. If you remember the old Dungeon Master game, one of the one of the advertisements stressed that it was a lot more fun if you played it with stereo headphones on. And same is true for this game. I'm pretty sure, I don't know for certain, but I think this is a surround sound here with uh, Grimrock. But you can usually hear the enemies before you can see them. And that really ratchets up the tension, especially in some of the harder areas where you really can't afford to uh, get uh, ambushed or surprise attacked by these guys. So definitely makes it a lot more intense. It's a really wonderful way to use game audio effectively. It's not just uh, not just for decoration, actually part of the gameplay. And here's another one of their favorite tricks. Oh, you open the door and right away have to fight a monster. This is the first encounter I've had with these skeleton guys, and they do really uh, pretty good damage, so you will definitely not want to just sit there and take it if you can uh, possibly avoid it. I've got a nice backstab in there. Once you level up your weapons, uh, maces or axes or swords, you begin to get special attacks. That's what those blue bars are for. You can activate some pretty uh, powerful moves like chopping with the axe, thrusting with the sword. It's all automatically handled for the melee weapons. So It is nice to see those uh, big numbers pop up on the screen, though. You see my torch is getting a little dim there. It's happened to me several battles I've actually lost because I, uh, right in the middle of the battle, the torch will go out and I'll be in almost in complete darkness trying to fight a monster. That's pretty scary. Fortunately, not a problem here. All right, now I have a shield and a spear. Now, the nice thing about these spears is it has the sufficient shaft length to be usable in the back row. However, I, you know, maybe I'm just not looking in the right place, but I didn't see any skills related to that weapon. So I think it might just be something to use for a while until you get spells or ranged weapons. At least I didn't use it for the... I quickly uh, replaced it for something else. All right, so I've got this secret door. Now these uh, doors... Uh, by the way, there's a lot of puzzles in this game that are optional. A lot of these uh, metal doors are that way, but if you can figure out how to get them open, you, you almost always get some really nice loot. Uh, this gave me a magical staff that will enhance the spells, give me some few extra uh, uh, stats. So quite quite nice. I think I found maybe uh, three of those in my first play, three different kinds of uh, wands, I suppose. Got another clue there about the crystals. Uh, the nice thing about these crystals, you're going to love these crystals, okay? <laughs> oh, also, I uh, got a poison cloud. Take a look at that. Uh, now, the thing with the crystals is, if you touch it, it automatically saves the game, which is not that big of a deal, because you can save any time. But what's really nice is it brings you back to full health and even resurrects dead party members. So those are really nice, especially when you're banged up real, really bad, and you've got maybe one guy left, and you just barely managed to make it to a crystal, and then you're back up to full strength. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's great stuff. Well, let's uh, let go to my other save game so you can see what the some of the later content looks like. As you can see, my party is pretty banged up. Most of them are almost dead. One of them is dead. Fortunately, as I said before, it's not that big of a deal if your characters die, as long as at least one of them survives. And you can get back to a crystal. 
soon as you touch that crystal, everybody will be back up to snuff. Plus, your dead guys can carry torches. Which is kind of nice. Kind of nice of them. Okay, here's one of the worst monsters in the game. These uh, Lovecraftian horrors. This Cthulhu-like being with a tentacle, tentacle mouth. <laughs> and by the way, if you're not familiar with H.P. Lovecraft, what the hell's wrong with you? I get a collection of his stories and thank me later. Okay, you see this guy's got a shield that you have to get through before you can start damaging him. Plus, he's got some nasty spells and if they hit you, they'll do damage to everybody in the party. Even the guys in the back, so you really have to be careful and try to kill these guys quick and not let them get those swipes at you. Uh, there are some battles where uh, you'll be in a room with these guys and there's several, so what you want to do in those cases is, if at all possible, try to get out of the room and, and lure them out after you. You can really use the uh, the map to your advantage if you can sort of fool their AI, get them uh, stuck in a room. Uh, it doesn't work all the time, but usually you can get them separated if you're if you're patient. See, so the last thing I'd want to do is go charging into that room with two of these guys. Be almost a certain death. There's a, f a fireball. Definitely don't want to get hit by that. Now I'll try to. Uh, looks like I was not able. I was trying to uh, keep the one guy in the room, but I failed. <laughs> I've got two. Oh, by the way, you got to watch out for those holes too. Um, they won't kill you, but they'll do some damage. If you take enough damage, you'll you'll die. It's usually worth uh, dropping into them anyway, though, because there's some uh, pretty cool treasure and items in some of the pits. It basically just puts you in a special part of the level below you. Okay, so this is... Oh, that was probably the, the end of this party right there. Got hit with that fireball. <laughs> Definitely not a smart thing to do. I'll see if I can uh, try to get this guy into a better position. It really worries me that there's another one back there somewhere. You never know when he's going to pop up, possibly behind me. I'm doing my little dirty dancing here. you got to be careful not to get danced into a corner, though. If you get jammed up between uh, two of these guys in a corner, you've just about had it for sure. Unless you can kill one and, and get, get out. Now, that's cost me more than one party. <laughs> So just don't let it happen to you. Oh, just got shocked. Up, oh, and it's game over. So like a lot of these hardcore games, if you if you will, you want to save a lot and try to save to different files. Sometimes you can get in a little trouble if you might have to do a lot of backtracking. Sometimes are there certain items that you need to hold on to? You, you might not be aware of that. Uh, but some of the riddles will require some of these items. Now this is a horrible puzzle uh, that I, I really hated. I got stuck on this. I had to. This is the only puzzle that I had to look up. Now you got this clue here about slithering to the left and right, and uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty obvious that it pertains to this hallway. It's like the infinite hallway that goes on forever, unless you can get this combination right. Unfortunately, it's not clear where you should start. It's really a shame, because uh, it, it is a, a nice puzzle, but uh, you know it doesn't matter how many times you do it, if you're not starting in the right place, you're not going to, to solve it. So, so it, very, it was very frustrating uh, to me. I wish they had just made it obvious somehow. Maybe uh, put a circle on the floor, uh, maybe, or add a line to the clue, something along the lines of, she begins to slither right outside the effing hallway. Yeah, it would have made a lot, <laughs> a lot better. Okay, so you get to the end of this thing, and as usual, uh, thank you, Almost Human, we have to fight one of these fire guys, and these are one of the guys that does the AoE damage, area of effect, damage your whole party. So again, you have to be really careful not to get hit by, or try to get hit by as few of those fireballs as possible. Now this is where it starts to get pretty intense, because you don't know if there's another one of those <laughs> fire guys running around. They could be right beside me. I wouldn't even know it until it was too late. Definitely some intense stuff. Now, you see I got the little snail on my guy there. It means he's carrying too much weight. Now, I didn't know this the first playthrough, but there's uh, no reason really to, keep up, to, to hold on to old weapons and armor. 
Uh, there's no store, no way to sell it, at least uh, that I've found. So, you know, you can feel free just to get rid of that extra weight. Uh, that said, there are some riddles that require items, uh, stuff like a skull, for example. So if you just, if you drop the skull way back level 2 or 3, then you're on level 12 and you need the skull, uh, that means some backtracking. You know, it's not the end of the world. You can, I don't think you can destroy any items. Uh, fairly sure that you can recover most of the items that you drop, but it's just a matter of where did you leave it. <laughs> so you can make notes on the auto map. So what I suggest is whenever you drop an item, to put a note on the map where you dropped it and what it was. Just in case uh, you need it later, you'll know where to, where to get it. So that's very good advice. <laughs> you will definitely thank me if you follow it. There is one of my uh, favorite moments uh, from the game. This is, you know, you've gotten through this hallway, you fought in some little, uh, some trash, some fire guys, and then you're going in this long and twisting corridor. You're thinking, man, this is a <laughs> long corridor. Oh, it's going on forever. Let me rush through. There's nothing that's going to get me in this corridor. La 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 la, guard is down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, this is exactly what I didn't want to see. These guys do the sort of train rush charge thing and it'll one shot you if you if it connects. So this is going to be pretty damn tricky. And it's really cool that they set it up this way because now I've got to... This is some of the <laughs> most intense backtracking I've ever seen in a game. And what I'm going to try to do is keep hitting them with these uh, ranged weapons. I've got some really powerful spells, but it's going to be difficult to, uh, to set them up without getting hit by this guy's charge. If I could just get him into that room with the four tiles in it, I'd be fine, but I'm stuck in this hallway almost as if by design. So I'm running, th you know, thinking hey, I'm going to get out of here and go to a bigger room when I discover that I'm at a dead end. And I have to fight this guy <laughs> head on. At least I can keep him from stomping me. So now it's just a race, a damage race. Can I kill him before he kills me? I've got nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And I threw away my spare loincloth, so this could get very nasty. But, as luck would have it, I triumphed and even gained a level. Hells yeah! So there you have it, folks. Legend of Grimrock. Great game, lots of fun, uh, really good puzzles. Uh, some good combat, really intense uh, dungeon crawling. If you're a fan of Dungeon Master and Eye of the Beholder, uh, you're, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't like this game. Now, I would give Legend of Grimrock a 10 out of 10, but there are no rats. So I'm giving this a 1 out of 10. Now, I'm holding out hope that there will be some DLC upcoming with an alternate ending involving a rat somehow, in which case I will bring that score back up to 10 out of 10. Now, if you want to get Legend of Grimrock, you can get it from Steam. Big advantage of that, of course, is you get the Steam achievements. Other option, of course, is GOG, goodoldgames.com. And I'll provide my affiliate link on the show notes, so if you go that route, yours truly will get a fraction of a penny for every copy of the game sold, or <laughs> something like that. Or you can buy it directly from the developer website, now, it's going to be about $15 regardless, so I would uh, highly recommend that you buy it from the developer directly. That way they don't have to share their prof their profits uh, with GOG or Steam. They get more money, and hopefully that will encourage them to make more games. If you'd like to encourage me to make more of these videos, then throw a few dollars my way via armchairarcade.com or follow the links at the bottom of the show. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I should be back next week with the follow-up interview I did with Mr. George Singer, a.k.a. The Fat Man. And in that interview, we focus in on Wing Commander, The Seventh Guest, Eleventh Hour, and George's other games. So if you like the round one, I think you're really going to like round two. As always, I want to thank you. If you have supported the show, you can learn how to do that at armchairarcade.com or by following the links at the bottom of the show notes. Now, what about that Ale of the Week? 
Now the ale for this week is Lucid Camo. And this is brewed right here in Minnesota, in Minnetonka to be precise. This is a double pale ale. Their catchphrase is clarity in thinking, excellence in drinking. And as far as I know, this is the first time I've seen clear thinking and excellent drinking associated together and juxtaposed like that. So quite interesting, especially given that this has 9% alcohol uh, content and it's apparently brewed with five different kinds of hops. This will more than likely be a very intense experience. Let's try it out. So I've got some lucid camo here in the rather excellent drinking horn. So let's give it a smell. <sighs> Smells like perfume. <laughs> really nice aroma, getting that sort of hoppy, peachy uh, type of aroma that you get. Apparently my wife finds all ale smells disgusting, but uh, I beg to differ. Let's give it a taste. Oh, wow. Okay, first thing you notice with this is the incredible thickness. Uh, this is a very creamy beer. It's, it's like drinking a chocolate uh, milk or maybe a, a Yoohoo. You know, that very thick chocolatey kind of a uh, texture. Uh, flavor wise, uh, this is, you definitely get some bitterness, uh, hoppiness, if you will, and uh, some cherry, chocolatey kind of, uh, um, almost like a dessert beer, you know, if you will. Uh, quite tasty, though, uh, but with 9% alcohol, you don't want to drink too much of that, <laughs> or you will mangle your quotations at the end of your videos. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, here it goes. Uh, this is a quotation from George Norman Douglas, a composer from, of course, Finland. And it goes something like this. The business of life is to enjoy oneself. Everything else is a mockery. See you guys next week.